Yeah, I got skills. Yeah, I got skills. Yeah, I got skills. All right, today on Media Madness, episode two, we're going to go over media literacy skills. And uh, let's go ahead and just jump right, in, right on into it. So today we're going to cover, these are various media literacy skills you should know. Uh, we have analysis, we have evaluation, we have grouping, we have induction, we then have deduction, abstraction, and synthesis. And so I'm going to go over the definition of all these and give some examples, some real world examples, hopefully current. You guys are watching this in 2050, you know. Thanks. Uh, but go ahead and check out also tulipmedia.com. We got all sorts of good content. We have new videos, we have articles, we got all sorts of good stuff here. Uh, yeah, and we worked real hard on this, man. It was we got it was a struggle, but it's good. Articles are good, content's good, videos are good. It's a great website, and it looks pretty too. So uh, let's start with analysis. Analysis is going to be breaking down something bigger into a subgroup. So if you have like the Oakland Raiders, the entire that entire sports team is the big big circle, big umbrella. You want to break it down into subgroups of team players, coaching staff, and then like. Uh, like water assistants, water boys, and assistants, and trainers, and stuff like that. So, media literacy skill. Media literacy skill, you gotta know that. So, like with movies, you gotta break it down to actors, you gotta break it down to the production, break it down into set design. Uh, so, it's important. Evaluation is gonna be whether or not something's good or bad. And this skill is a little weird because evaluation. It doesn't necessarily have to do with whether or not you're evaluating skills. Like everybody's got an opinion on whether or not something's good or bad, but when you give that opinion, it then says how you what your standard for that thing is. So if you're evaluating Adam Sandler movies and you say Adam Sandler is a great he's a great actor, he contributes a lot to this culture, like he's up there with just some of the greats, like Leonardo DiCaprio, like maybe he got that Oscar, but Adam Sandler was right there. He was right there in the winning for it. That says more about your standard than the evaluation of that Adam Sandler's or whether or not he's good or bad. So note that this has to do, this ties in directly with your standard of like critique. So here we also have grouping. Now grouping, uh, to continue with the sports metaphor, grouping is going to be if you have the Oakland Raiders and then you break it down to team players. So you want to be able to analyze the different subgroups, but then be able to group those subgroups into like just quarterbacks, just wide receivers, just cornerbacks, just safeties. So the ability to group them then allows you to evaluate all of the quarterbacks, all of the cornerbacks, all the safeties, all the wide receivers, and you're able to make a better, a better evaluation, I guess, or at least make it more efficient. Because you can group them against each other. Or you can evaluate them against each other. you got to group them together. Uh, induction here is the scientific method. Induction is the scientific method. Scientific method. People are going to throw this word at you and be like, oh, it's, it's craziness. You've never heard of induction before. It's a scientific method. You've heard this a million times. You've heard this since like fifth grade. Scientific method. Now, for people that are unfamiliar with what the scientific method is, you have to observe something in its natural habitat, try to see a pattern, and then test that pattern with more observations. So uh, Adam Sandler, if you're able to come to the conclusion that Adam Sandler has the similar movie roles, like in all of his things, he's the exact same, he's a, more or less the exact same character throughout most all of his movies. So you take Adam Sandler, you know nothing about him. You see the first movie, and you go, okay, Adam Sandler, he's kind of a goofy character. Like, he's a little crazy. <laughs> you see the second one, and you go, okay, he's, he's still goofy. He still has that like slapstick con comedy. The, oh, and the, just the, he's, he's just kind of the same character. Then you see a third one, and you go, okay, this is the same guy. So you start to come to this conclusion. You start to come to have this theory. Like, oh, maybe Adam Sandler isn't such a diverse actor as we thought. And then you have to watch more movies, see if your pattern, see if your theory holds within the pattern, and that's the scientific method. So that's induction. Again, induction is a scientific method. Don't be intimidated by that stuff. It's just scientific method. You're very familiar with it. 
deduction here is a whole other beast. Similar thing though, you're going to want to reach conclusions with deduction and induction. So, for example, if A, then B, conclusion C. They have to follow each other. So, Tesh is a bachelor. My friend Tesh is a bachelor. All bachelors are unmarried. Therefore, Tesh is unmarried. Because Tesh is a bachelor, he has to be unmarried. There's no other way. He can't be a bachelor and be married. So, like, because of the definition of all bachelors are unmarried. So Tesh will probably stay, will probably stay unmarried, and unless he, you know, he, he changes some things. But anyways, he just needs to, he'll probably stay unmarried. But abstraction is a little bit different, and that abstraction is where you're able to break down something large and then have a simplified version of it. So, for example, if you had a movie plot, you, you watched a whole movie, you just watched a two-hour movie. Sitting there enjoying your movie, eating your popcorn, drinking your soda. You watch a two-hour movie, and you you walk out, and your friend goes, "How was the movie?" Are you gonna sit there for another two hours and explain the entire movie plot by plot, intricate detail by intricate detail? No, and it's probably not possible for you to do so. So you're gonna go ahead and tell them a simplified plot version. So uh, let's say let's take uh, let's take Monsters Inc. Monsters Inc. For example, Aries pretty familiar with Monsters Inc. Monster Inc. is a story about monsters who were living in a world and then came across, came, went through a door, came across a human, built, built a great relationship with the human, and then thought humans were bad, but then slowly started to develop empathy for them, and then there was heartbreak, and I won't ruin the rest of the movie for you. But that is, abstraction is the ability to break it down to something smaller, where you get the general gist of what's going on uh, and not going into heavy detail about it. So let's move on to synthesis. Synthesis is the the most, in my opinion, is the most important media literacy skill. Uh, so synthesis is like breaking, all right, synthesis, let's think in cars. You want to fix a car, so you're going to break, you, you break, you take your entire car apart and then you rebuild it with the exact same parts. It's going to be the exact same car. It's going to be the exact same thing. Now, if you went to a parking lot and you started grabbing all different parts from like all different types of cars, like Ford, Tesla, Honda, Subaru, and then you smash them all together and you made one car, that would be synthesis. So you take the best from all of them and you smash it all together. Synthesis, let's relate that to media messages because that might be a little bit of a stretch. But, uh, Synthesis requires you to do the re be proficient at least in all the rest of the media literacy skills. You need to be able to analyze, you need to be able to take that car apart, you need to be able to evaluate whether or not that part's good or not, and then if you're taking apart multiple pieces of a car, you got to group them all together and see like, okay, which carburetor's the best, which motor's the best, let's see, and then through induction or deduction, make a choice, and then put it back together into one car. So you got to get the motor part, you got to get the hood, you got to get the steering wheel, all that stuff, and put it back together in a new car. Now, let's take this for media messages. So, if you're watching, like, you're watching the news, this is probably, all right, fake news, guys, fake news, I, everything's not real anymore, it's fake news. Fake news is an issue because people don't synthesize, they're taking from the same car, they're taking from the exact same car. You go to CNN and you're ripping that car apart. And putting the exact same car back together. You're going to Fox. You're ripping that car apart, putting that exact same car right back together. You need to be able to synthesize, use synthesis when receiving those media messages. Take a little bit from CNN. Take a little bit from Fox. Take a little bit from like the New York Times. Those just get get a collection of things. And now you're going to have to though. You're going to have to analyze, evaluate all those media messages. It does take work, guys. And then rip it all apart. Figure out what's the best. Put it all back together and then form your opinion. Form your argument and opinion on what your stance necessarily will be on a certain topic. But synthesis requires you to take different parts from different things and bring it together to form something new. And that, kids, is how we solve world peace. They also need to take a little bit from everybody else and just, and just come together as one unique whole, one nice conglomerate and all that stuff. Because 
that's that's what life is, guys. All right. Well, anyways, like those are the media literacy skills, and uh, check out twolitmedia.com. It's great. It's got super cool stuff on it. Looks really cute too. Like it's great. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and have a great rest of your week.